Hi guys, it is a muggy spring day here in the end times in Babylon. We have made it Thursday morning, I believe April 24, 2015. So Thursday, you know, I don't have a pre-arranged rant. So uh, I didn't really have anything to rant about uh, when I woke up this morning, but no fear. I just had to go on the mainstream media to look at the top 100 stories on planet Earth what are we, two days after Earth Day, and in less than one hour, I had 15 rants. So I, I could make a 30-minute rant out of any one of these stories, but I'm going to try to do 15 rants in 30 minutes. So I better grab my bullshit detector button, dive into Yahoo News, and this, and this is just the way they rolled off. This is the order that they, they came to me uh, from the top 100 stories. Okay. AP, report man-made earthquakes shake over a dozen areas in the U.S. More than a dozen areas in the U.S. have been shaken in recent years by earthquakes triggered by oil and gas drilling, a government report released Thursday found. The man-made quakes jolted once stable regions in eight states, according to researchers at the U.S. Geological Survey, experts said the spike in seismic activity is mainly caused by the oil and gas industry injecting wastewater deep underground, which can activate dormant faults. There you go. This is the U.S. Geological Survey. Uh, I, I, I guess the cheering on Farrakh Obama ramping up. Fracking. Okay, I need, I need to hurry along. Okay, this one. <laughs> Uh, this one was almost a, I almost was going to make a 30 minute rant out of this one. Miami Beach sees rising seas as no threat to its real estate boom. Miami Beach's condo boom is bubbling hot with glass towers being built as fast as they can be even as scientists say rising seas could swamp much of the city by the end of the century. So, so this is the logic that, that city officials are using. City officials are betting that a surge in real estate tax dollars fueled by the property boom today will bankroll big investments in fighting the effects of climate change tomorrow. Many scientists, however, have doubts about how much can be done and how soon to stem tides that few until recently thought would rise so fast. And uh, anyway, uh, I need to jump down to the bottom to this real estate developer. Uh, I, I, I absolutely love this quote from this greedy pig. I mean, this is right out of a Carl Hyacin novel. This is uh, real estate, uh, I don't know what the hell his name is. His last name is Daniels. Okay, Mr. Daniels says, quote, it is a great moment for Miami Beach. There are a lot of projects. Everything is selling very, very quickly, said Daniels, who is selling condos at the Ritz-Carlton. 111 opulent homes ranging in price from $1.8 million to $16 million. Daniels is not fretting about sea level rise. Quote, <clears throat> it is something that I think will have some type of impact far in the future, <clears throat> but 
the city of Miami Beach is taking major precautions. It certainly hasn't affected our sales or slowed down our sales. We haven't lost any deals because of it. And I don't anticipate we will. There you go. Okay, from Miami Beach to the uh, rest of the ocean. <clears throat> this is a new report from the World Wildlife Fund. Oceans worth $24 trillion to, to the global economy. $24 trillion to the global economy, but sea change needed to save them. And I'm just going down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down to the middle of the story under the subheading serious signs of failing ocean health collapsing fisheries mangrove deforestation and disappearing corals and seagrass are among the changes that are threatening the livelihoods of hundreds of millions of people not not to mention the ocean they depend on a full two-thirds of the economic value generated by oceans depends on healthy ocean conditions. But unfortunately, oceans are showing serious signs of failing health. These statistics are frightening. 90% of global fish stocks are already overexploited, and marine species declined by 39% between 1970 and 2010. Global warming could, meanwhile, prove to be a death sentence for delicate coral reefs containing some of the most diverse ecosystems on the planet. Already, half of all corals have vanished, and they are expected to be gone by 2050. Mangroves, considered vital to coral reefs and fisheries, and which serve as important buffers for coastal cities against rising levels and storm surges, are meanwhile facing deforestation rates three to five times higher than the average global forest loss, which is already completely out of control. Okay, from the oceans, let's go to finally some good news. Anyone who thinks it's all bad news, employers cut jobs in 31 U.S. states as growth slows. <clears throat> employers in 31 U.S. states cut jobs last month as weak economic growth weighed on hiring in a slowdown in oil and gas drilling caused big job losses in some states, namely uh, good, good old Texas. The biggest job cuts occurred in states with large oil and gas drilling led by Texas, which lost 25,400 jobs last month, followed by Oklahoma, uh, which cut 12,900 jobs, uh, followed by those Pennsylvania frackers, which lost 12,700 jobs. There you go. So we have some good news. North Dakota, obviously, uh, no longer the, uh, the lowest unemployment in the country. Okay, as long as we're talking about that general oil and gas thing, here is this story about these 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 gas flares or shit coming out of uh, of factories. Plant flares flares could pump out more pollution than previously thought. No shit. <clears throat> A new method of estimating air pollution from flares at oil refineries and chemical plants could mean that earlier tallies substantially undercounted the tons of chemicals pumped in to communities, you know, from, from these, from burning off this shit. Flares are used to burn off gas, a process that releases some volatile organic 
compounds which can harm health and contribute to lung damaging smog. Uh, the new calculations suggest that factory flares likely belch four times more uh, pollution than previously thought and they point out that maybe one of the reasons for this is uh, is, is that all of these uh, you know unadulterated horseshit low projections were because the EPA was was using the statistics provided by the industries creating the pollution. It's the fox guarding the head house and the EPA signing off on it. So we will see what the EPA does with this new report. You know goddamn well what they're gonna do with the report, not a goddamn thing. Guys, you know, this, this next story, I don't know if there's any humor, but sometimes, as I say, if, if, you, if you lose your sense of humor about the collapse of a planet, you've lost everything, and nowhere is that truer than the Amazon jungle, where we see the story from live science, voices of rare turtles may prevent their extinction. So this is a wildlife biologist going down there to Amazon trying to protect these turtles I'm, I'm just gonna read you the first uh, couple of sentences because I got a I, I hope you enjoy the sick story so this is a trained wildlife biologist again I guess she's got it I don't know if it's a BA or uh, a, a masters or a I, I, anyway what she got anyway okay take it away girl Years ago, in the Brazilian Amazon, I was exposed to a prevalent philosophy for how animals relate to humans. One I did not expect. To the indigenous people I encountered, an animal's primary purpose was to be eaten for food. Hmm. And, 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 and many of those people had never considered that animals could become extinct. I, anyway, guys, I, in, the, in the sick hambone humor department, we're going to go from the Amazon jungle to sub-Saharan Africa. You know, no, no uh, end times headlines rant would be complete. Without a foray into <laughs> into sub-Saharan Africa, take it away. A French news service: <clears throat> Zimbabweans fleeing South Africa attacks face bleak future. What what I need is a is a no shit Sherlock button detector, kind of the opposite of a of a bullshit detector. Zimbabwean migrants who fled a wave of anti-foreigner violence in neighboring South Africa arrived home Wednesday to the same bleak economic prospects that sent them abroad in the first place. Visibly dejected as they stepped out of buses Young working men and women with babies on their back said their dreams had been destroyed by the attacks which killed seven people and displaced thousands. Yeah, those migrants with babies on their backs. Okay, I guess this is a PS to my climate change meltdown roundup rant yesterday. A new report from our old buddies at the World Bank. The banksters behind it all who, when you dig it all back, probably the number one cause of climate change on the planet would be the World Bank. They have figured something out. That climate change is a fundamental threat 
to economic development. Hmm. Global governments must dig deep to combat climate change, the World Bank chief said Thursday, describing a fundamental threat to development. Okay, so this is that Jim Yong Kim, Kim guy warning that governments must act now to limit global warming. Uh, otherwise, the impact would be devastating. Yes. Climate change is a fundamental threat to development in our lifetime. Uh, just, just, just as development is a fundamental threat to the climate. I wonder why climate change is now a fundamental threat to development. Huh? But, I don't know, I'm, I'm a dumb hippie sitting in a chair. I'm not the president of the World Bank, so I, it's, it's beyond my intellectual capabilities. Okay, as long as I'm PSing my climate change roundup rant, here is Fading Gems, 10 places to visit before they are gone. Many parts of the globe face threats from warming temperatures, sea level rise, drought, and other effects of change, of climate change and human activity. Here are 10 amazing places to visit before it is too late. We're going to go down to 10. Tuvalu, Glacier National Park, the Great Barrier Reef. How about the Swiss Alps? The Amazon rainforest, that, that's, a, that's a good one, you better get down there now. Kiribati, <clears throat> Venice, the Dead Sea, Gansu province in China, and coming in at number 10 of 10 places to visit before they are gone would be California. All right, moving on from California to China. China warns that North Korea nuclear arsenal is expanding. Do you really think so? <clears throat> Chinese nuclear experts believe that North Korea may already have a nuclear arsenal of 20 warheads and the uranium enrichment capacity to double that figure by next year, the Wall Street Journal reported this morning. Uh, the estimate is significantly higher than any previously known Chinese assessment. It also exceeds recent uh, estimates by U.S. experts and looking out uh, about five years uh, over the next five years, uh, in a worst-case scenario, North Korea could possess 100 atomic bombs. I anybody uh, on this planet saying it, it is not time uh, for us to go over there and, and rub that little trigger-happy nutcase maggot off of the face of this planet. That's what Barack Obama ought to be doing for his, uh, for his, for his uh, ridiculous environmental legacy, is taking out that little, that little maggot. Okay, from North Korea to North Carolina. North Korea to North Carolina. Residents near Duke Ash Dumps told not to drink well water. North Carolina officials are advising residents near Duke Energy Coal Ash Dumps not to drink or cook with water from their wells after tests showed contamination of water supplies, that this is underground water supplies, with toxic heavy metals. There you go. Uh, this is 87 wells uh, tested near Duke Power Plants showed results that failed to meet state 
groundwater standards anybody thinking this story is a uh, is limited to North Carolina wake up and smell the coffee okay from the next from the no shit Sherlock uh, department Associated Press thank you for telling me that I, I never understood this before popular pesticide hurts wild bees hmm wow a common type of pesticide this is the that word i can't pronounce neonicotinoids or something like that a common type of pesticide is dramatically harming wild bees according to a new in the field study that outside experts say may help shift the way the u.s government looks at a controversial class of chemicals uh, anyway so the EU has already uh, banned this shit and but of course the US uh, has not gotten around to it uh, we will see uh, we will see a anybody who thinks this new report is going to get the US to ban this shit got one thing to tell you Here is the uh, study's lead author, Mage Rundolph of Lund University. I, 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 I love uh, this quote. When the, when the results first came in, I was quite, oh my God. Uh, she said the reduction in bee health was, quote, much more dramatic than I had ever expected. And, and, and just so for anyone who does not realize this, if you go and you buy this shit from these big box stores, all these pretty little plants, Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, Walmart, uh, with, from their garden centers, you can be virtually 100% sure that uh, these big box stores, every goddamn pretty little flower you buy from them is a death sentence for any bees in your yard. Here we go. You can figure out uh, why I flagged this story. U.S. Navy conducts first drone in-flight refueling. The U.S. Navy announced it had successfully completed its first in-flight refueling of a drone, widely increasing the use and range of the unmanned aircraft. <laughs> now, back to China. How about this one? Scientists urge moratorium after Chinese edit human embryos. Global scientists on Thursday this morning renewed calls to halt controversial research to genetically edit. I like how they say this, genetically edit human embryos after a Chinese team published details of a stunted but breakthrough attempt in this new frontier of science. And we're going to end up, we're going to go from China, end up in the line at McDonald's in Michigan. Woman jailed after McDonald's shooting over baconless burger. A Michigan woman was sentenced to three to seven years in prison after her firing her gun at, at a McDonald's drive-thru when her hamburger was delivered twice without bacon. You know, she, they, 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 she, she ordered her cheeseburger with bacon the first time, and, and they left the damn bacon off of her cheeseburger. So she complained. They did apologize and said, okay, lady, we're sorry. We're, we're going to do this again, drive around again, and we will give you a free second cheeseburger with bacon. And guess what happened when she came around the second time? She got another cheeseburger without bacon, and, and, and she did what anybody 
would do at this point. She pulled a, a, a goddamn gun out of her purse and, 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 and shot the McDonald's building. She didn't hit anybody. She just shot the damn building, taking out her own car window in the process. This was Shanika Monique Torres. You go, girlfriend. You go, Shanika. More power to you, girl. We'll see how much bacon you get on your goddamn McDonald's cheeseburgers over the next three to seven years as you rot in prison. Anyway, uh, you, you can decide what that has to do with the downfall of a planet. But anyway, I have to go build a compost bin out of a dead cedar tree. That's what I'm doing with my day for this rant. Bye, guys.